What's going on, everybody, and welcome to an an extra special Bet Nabooz and Tape Show for the Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Of course, I'm your host, Kyle Roscoe, here with my co-host, Patrick Kunsel, Charlie Freeman, and Noah Maher. And we're going to give you guys a really detailed and in-depth analysis of the Pegasus Philly and Mare Turf, which is a grade two for $500,000 going a mile on the 16th on the Gulfstream Turf course. And guys, when I mean big fields these days, it's a very, very big field, a field of 12 with two also eligibles. And it's going to be like that the entire way through the Pegasus World Cup card. So not one you want to miss on this podcast is there's a few shows coming up that you guys are going to want to be aware of. If you guys are watching this when it's um, when this is released, you will see that Wednesday night, which is tomorrow night from when we're recording this. Um, we, all of us on the screen here, have a show covering the middle pick four, which covers the three graded undercard stakes on Pegasus World Cup Day. And Thursday, which is January 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern, all shows are at 8 p.m. Eastern, always on the HHH Racing Podcast channel, um, except obviously when they're not, um, when they're tweeted beforehand. But the Pegasus World Cup show on thursday with howard pete and paul and jason blewett of west point thoroughbreds will be at 6 p.m eastern a little bit early start time after that we will do an after party for the eclipse awards covering everyone that won there and then saturday guys at 4 p.m eastern on the hhh racing podcast channel please be sure to tune into our live show where we will cover live analysis in-depth look and I'll watch along with you guys as well. Please be there on the uh, YouTube.com slash HHH Racing Podcast. But guys, like I said, we're going to get right into it here. This is a full field of 12 for the Pegasus Philly and Mare Turf, a grade two again for $500,000. You'll see the odds pop up on the screen there. The morning line favorite goes to the number four, Star Fortress for Cherie DeVoe, who had an absolutely monster effort first time here in the states and i'll switch the pps but we'll go over star fortress in a minute here like i said guys we're gonna go through the full field for you guys and give a quick uh look in and analysis for every single horse in this field then we'll give our top three at the end noah you are first up you have cairo consort and like i said we'll go around as a kind of a round table uh discussion on each horse but for pletcher and ryan moore jumps on cairo consort uh your ho- first ho- horse in the gate yeah, starting us off, the Cairo Consort, who is uh, fifteen to one on the morning line. Um, this horse had quite a bit of success early in her career. Uh, started the year off with two wins here at Goldstream Park. Uh, hasn't won since, uh, but last time ran a decent fourth at five to two in the uh, Tropical Park Oaks. Uh, this will be her first time having to face older, um, and Ryan Moore is in town to ride Warm Heart uh, in the Pegasus Turf, and he decides to hop on here uh, on Cairo Consort. All right, so now moving into the uh, second gate, we have Chili Flag, uh, I believe at 20 to one is what we showed. Uh, Flag and Pratt climbing aboard, which is certainly interesting, because, uh, you know, not usually used to seeing him on a horse at those kind of odds. Chad Brown training, who, you know, I know we've talked about before through covering Gulfstream, hasn't always, or hasn't really been hot this meet, but normally is certainly in these kind of races, his horse is usually bang. So certainly a price to look out for, you know, Chili Flag certainly hasn't run at this level of competition. You know, as you look through the horse has really been running mainly just in allowances, optional claimings. And last time out was in the first stakes race in America that this horse is running uh, a horse that's going to have to be trying to fly away, but likely Pratt will likely have to send a little more knowing uh, obviously that there's other closers. Like we'll touch on with star fortress and uh, fluffy socks in this race. So certainly it'll be an interesting spot that Chili Flag will have to figure out at a difficult pace. Uh, but, you know, the horse has shown very solid efforts recently, you know, all the way back in July, that Belmont effort winning by six lengths. Certainly an effort like that could make Chili Flag finish somewhere in the money at a nice price. Hasn't quite gone to that level since, but, you know, still lost by a nose, one last time out by a link. So the horse still has been in solid form. Uh, again, a pretty difficult spot, but never underestimate Flavian and Pratt and Chad Brown here. Uh, and then moving into the... Third gate, we have Accomplished Girl. Uh, you know, last time out, Accomplished Girl, for a horse that normally likes to send, trained by so- uh, Safi Joseph Jr., was really a wild card at a race I was actually at uh, for that grade three at Gulfstream on December 30th. And uh, was certainly one that, to me, was surprising, took as much money as she did, knowing that this was, again, a speed horse switching to the first race that wasn't a true sprint. Uh, is working incredibly forwardly. I know that Tapita's kind of place a little faster lately in workouts, but still, they have a 58 flat. 
a 58 and four, and then, you know, for four furlongs, 48 and four, another horse working very forwardly. And another one that's 20 to one on the morning line, accomplished girl gets Edgar Zayas again, certainly should be interested in this spot at a price simply from a pace standpoint, because uh, I know Kyle had shown kind of what the projected pace will look like. And you have to assume accomplished girl will absolutely send. And, uh, you know, last time out showed the mile wasn't a problem, made a nice adjustment, was honestly right there, sat just behind the leaders. And then if it wasn't for a great effort on a horse that I'll touch on later in full count, Felicia nearly got the job done. Certainly a live horse that could absolutely finish in the money at odds of 20 to 1. There is one thing I want to point out before I go on to the next horse, which is Star Fortress. Obviously, your morning line favorite and it should be off that last effort, but there's a uh, shout out Ed DeRosa for this one, by the way, on Twitter, if you don't follow him there. Um, Gold, at Goldstream Park, obviously, for Pegasus World Cup Day, there are a lot of trainers that are over going through, um, and one of them being Safi Joseph Jr. Um, Dale Romans, Safi Joseph, Ian Wilkes, Rusty Arnold, Pat Biancone, Michael Matz, and Roger Atfield are all Ofer and the biggest name, obviously, I mean, probably not the biggest name out of all of them, but for Florida racing, Safi Joseph is definitely the biggest name on there. And the fact of the matter is that he's going to have a lot of horses running for big money on these days where he has not shown to be in the winner's circle. Not saying he can't win, but that's always something to keep in mind, guys. The morning line favorite star fortress. I mean, what is there really to say? Unfortunately, we can't show the replays due to uh churchill downs but that last race guys was unbelievably fast the best time form number in the entire field of 127 winning by 10 links in the cardinal stakes at churchill downs and doing it i mean i'm as impressive as you can winning by 10 links i mean sat in the back of a pretty hot pace and that's definitely something to keep in mind with star fortresses you know she definitely got the setup last time um where they went, I think they went like 47 to the half mile or something quick, something as equal as quick as that. So, you know, will she get the setup this time? There's not too many horses that want to go to the lead, but not saying that this pace is necessarily going to be slow. And especially on this Gulfstream turf course, it's not necessarily where you want to be as in, you know, as far back as someone like Star Fortress could be. But she also, I mean, look, she was last, but she was only last by five and a half lengths. So she could be a little bit more forward and surprise a little bit of people. But the deserving favor with the highest time form number in the entire field, the Star Fortress, is definitely a force to be reckoned with on Saturday. So now moving into uh, the fifth position, we have full count Felicia, who is opening at morning line odds of 10 to 1. Uh, last time out had Irad Ortiz aboard. This time now Javier Castellano is aboard, who has ridden the horse before one time at uh, Aqueduct back in April of 22. Full Count Felicia is certainly an interesting horse for me in this race. Uh, again, a horse that I got to see, as I touched on earlier with the Accomplished Girl race, one last time out. Uh, and, you know, this is one where I certainly would encourage uh, our viewers to end up going back and watching the replay because you see a horse that went off at even money and wins by, you know, three-fourths of a length. And you kind of start to think, you know, is this horse really, you know, capable of stepping up to a, a more difficult field now this time out and, you know, a race where the horse should have won convincingly didn't. But if you watch that replay, it was a lot better than the, the, the distance showed. It was not an easy trip for full count, Felicia. I mean, credit to Irad for figuring out a way along the rail at the end to get by. But the horse got studied pretty badly uh, earlier in the replay if you choose to watch it. It was just, again, I, I remember watching this race in person and just talking actually to uh, – you know, boss man of our show, Howard, multiple times about how it didn't look like full count Felicia was going to be able to get it done because of this tough trip, uh, but managed to get it done. And, you know, from a pace standpoint, I actually think, and I know, again, you showed earlier, Kyle, where the different horses will be placed. I think full count Felicia will probably sit the best trip of anyone in this field. A horse that really does like to stalk will probably get the first chance of going by the early leaders like Accomplished Girl and Sister Luann, who we'll touch on later, and Ruby Nell, who will be more forwardly placed. I think full count Felicia will sit a really nice stalking trip and you know, a slight step forward from last time out with a cleaner trip, which I certainly think is possible. This horse could be very live at a very nice price. And I don't think you'll get 10 to 1. But if you get anywhere near that, full count Felicia is very dangerous. And again, trained by Brittany Russell. Uh, West Coast bias himself gets to cover the West Coast Invader here with the number six, Ruby Nell. Uh, Ruby Nell is 8 to 1 on the morning line. Uh, trained by Richard Mandela. You don't see it. Goldstream very often. And another foreign rider, uh, Frankie DeTori. Uh, this horse two back was in the matriarch finished a really good fifth, uh, behind fluffy socks. who ran second in that race. Um, but that day she was doing something, you know, that she doesn't normally do. She was coming from the back. Uh, normally she likes to be up front. Uh, she showed that in the, in the lady shamrock, which I believe was a prep for this race. Um, 
I think her style, especially with the Goldstream Park turf course being a little more favoring towards speed and the fact that uh, there might not be, you know, too many horses pressing her uh, unless one of the Safis do, she's going to have the lead on her own, I believe. Uh, and if she does, she's going to be pretty dangerous in this spot. And the seven hole fluffy socks for Chad Brown, his second horse um, in the field. Uh, comes out of the matriarch as well as several others, as we've heard, uh, have come out of. And, uh, you know, what a tough beat uh, Fluffy Sox, you know, faced in that race. Um, I don't want to play the game shoulda, woulda, coulda, but if surge capacity doesn't get the rail in that spot, I think uh, Fluffy Sox gets his uh, first grade one win. Um, and comes into this spot working really well uh, for Chad Brown. Um, you know, he's throwing up a couple bullet works. Um, he had to go six wide in that matriarch, which, as we see here, was a really good race, uh, you know, to tell us who do we like in this spot. Um, you know, as you see, as they come to the top of the stretch here, you'll see the uh, the 10, who is uh, Fluffy Sox, uh, with Irad aboard, will fly out wide there. And, um, you know, horse kicks on really, really well, uh, like a winner would. Um, and then you see the rail horse comes down the lane God, making down this the rail and, and watching this race again gives me so many shudders I, that was one of the horses i love that day was fluffy socks and getting beat on the wire like that the seven was your ruby nell as well who, like, like noah pointed out necessarily didn't get the trip that i think she wanted but um just wanted to replay that matriarch for you guys i'll go back to the pps that i was on but the number eight is next that being uh queen goddess patrick yeah, so Queen Goddess uh, for Michael McCarthy and Tyler Gaffleon will get the eight hole. Um, you know, this horse is gonna gonna go off at uh, six to one morning lot odds. Was a one point five million dollar purchase. Um, you know, and it comes out of the matriarch as well, and did win this race actually last year well, with uh, Louis Saez aboard. Uh, you know, I I just wonder, you know, where this horse is gonna uh, stand in this race. You know, I know Charlie talked about um, sister. Uh, so, sorry, full count Felicia getting a good uh, trip. Queen Goddess is going to have to sit a tri an interesting trip in here because I'm just not sure if she's going to be able to hold off closers or if she's going to have to go um, in front of them uh, in this spot. Uh, and, you know, at age six, has she started to age a little bit, you know, with um, the buyer speed figures starting to uh, decline? Yep. I mean, that's completely fair. And Didia is another one that we continue to talk about. Time and time again. This time, Shemina jumps off. Jose Ortiz will ride the six to one co um, third choice. But look, she's very, very interesting in this spot. A horse that's both came from far back and from mid pack. So you'll wonder where she is. She's generally more mid pack um, in longer races as she's um, she's ran in mile and a quarters, mile and an eighth. So now cuts back again to the mile and the sixteenth where she has won at both Colonial and at Fairgrounds. This Goldstream turf course, the one thing is, is that it's a really short run up to that first turn, a little bit better with the 16th than a mile, of course, but you're going to have to navigate from these outside gates. And with Didia, I think that mid-pack trip could suit her really well for a spot like this. Maybe Jose has to use a little bit early, but the fact that she's, Better than she ever has, just topped out. Even running tenth in that Philly and Mare turf, she was she was way wide. She was way far back. Way, realistically, just had way too much to do. Now coming out of that race, running you know could run a race more like um, the New York or the Rodeo Drive, a little bit closer up, a little closer order. And if she can finish with that flourish like she usually does, I think Didia is probably the most dangerous horse in the field at that mid price odds uh, sister luann is your is one that's a little bit more on the higher end here uh 20 to 1 morning line is the and she's got decent numbers like she's ran a couple 120s that especially that really nice race at kentucky downs in the fall but um that last time in the swanee river i mean if she couldn't win that race guys personally i don't think she's gonna win this race at all gets the hottest rider down at Goldstream for the winter in paco lopez but i mean with you know, we talked about the pace scenario and there might not be too much up front, but if she's not fast enough to beat out, let's say it's six Ruby Nell or the three accomplished girl from the inside, she's going to be wide going around that first turn. And um, even though she's going to be higher, definitely higher odds than both of those horses. I just don't, I don't see it for Sister Luen unless stuff really, really shapes up for her. 
But like I said, I'll, if you like Slister Luan at 20 to 1, I'll never talk you off a double digit horse. Next horse in here uh, is the other newly turned four year old, the number 11, Mission of Joy, uh, who I believe is 10 to 1 on the morning line uh, for Velasquez and Graham Motion. Uh, last time this horse ran a, a really, a really big number uh, down at Keeneland in the QE2, uh, finishing behind two Breeders' Cup contenders, Maus and Lindy. Um, I believe this is a pretty aggressive spot for Grand Motion. Um, yeah. But going back to that QE2 form at Keeneland, I, I, I think it held up pretty good. Um, kind of what you touched on, you know, as you get further and further out in terms of posts, uh, this is always going to be a tough post from here. Uh, I think she's going to have to work a little harder than she wants to try and get at the position that she wants to be in this spot. Yeah, and the outside post will go to surprisingly um, moves into the Pletcher uh, barn from uh, Shug McGahee and, uh, you know, the Rapoli stables. So this horse, you know, is going to go off at 20 to 1, but, you know, with connections, you have a feeling it's going to take some money. Um, it should like the uh, outside draw, considering this uh, horse is going to be a, a, a dead closer in this spot. Uh, you just wonder, though, off this layoff, the horse is going to be ready. You know, you have to trust connections in this spot. You know, you think they might be, you know, kind of having a little bit too much of, you know, wanting to just put a horse in a race like this. But listen, I, I think this horse, for what it was bought for and what they thought of, can um, can surprise from an outside draw, having done in the past, you know, winning from outside posts. So. That's the field of 12. And how many times have we seen a Rapoli come over the top with a 20 to one shot? And, you know, you'd be like, oh, why didn't I have that horse? You know, we see it all the time, guys. But we'll go real quick around the round table, we'll give our top picks as we uh, just gave a lot of deep dive analysis on every single horse in the race. Patrick, we'll go to you first for your top three. Who's going to win the Pegasus Philly and Mare Turf on Saturday? Yeah, so I have fluffy socks. Um, you know, I, I really like the matriarch. So uh, my top three will be uh, fluffy socks with uh, Didia in second, and then the number six Ruby Nell in third. Charlie, going to you next. Who's going to win the Pegasus, Pegasus Philly and Mare Turf? Yeah, you know, I really want to be creative here, and I certainly think a, a longer odd horse could end up winning. But I'm going to stick with Star Fortress, as you kind of touched on, outside of just the tremendous performance. I think this horse can sit a little closer than people will give her credit for, which will make the horse very dangerous. Second, I have fluffy socks. I mean, it's just hard not to love that performance. you got to feel for should have probably won last time out. And then third, I'm going full count Felicia. I mean, I touched on it earlier. I just think the horse could sit a nice stalking trip. And if you are looking for more of a value play price, this would be my top choice. I think she is very dangerous and could win this race at, at least opening 10 to 1. Hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Noah? Say what you want, but I'm going with Ruby Nell on top. Yeah, uh, I, I think I think she's going to be dangerous on the lead. Um I've actually got Didia on second. I think she's going to sit a really good trip. Uh, the question for me is whether she's good enough or not. Uh, and then I've got Star Fortress in third. Uh, has to be respected off of that for that last race. It, it was just you know too impressive to to leave that horse off any kind of horizontal ticket. I knew like I I should have just asked what you know who's your back to because I knew who you were going to go with on top. <laughs> I'm really surprised I'm the only one picking Diddy on top, guys. I really think she's going to set a nice trip, and she's the only – I mean, look, you know, they say by 10, but she was – so. I mean, she was 10th by four and a half only in the Breeders' Cup to Inspiral and Warm Heart, who Warm Heart's going to be a favorite in the in the, Philly, uh, in the Pegasus turf. So the fact of the matter is is that I think Diddy is just going to set a really nice trip, really close uh, – a lot closer up to the pace than she showed in the past um, – the past race and – Santa Anita. And I just think, like I said, I think she trips out and she's only getting better based on numbers. So going Diddy on top guys, I'm going to go fluffy socks in second. That matriarch I think has to be respected. And also as Noah just said, I'm putting, I have to put star fortress in third guys. If star fortress runs that hole in the wind again, you know, if you don't have this horse anywhere, you're going to feel a little silly, not having, you know, bad based on that last effort, but it is a very, very competitive race and a very interesting, just whole card at Goldstream. It really is fantastic, guys. And if you guys have not um, written them down yet, please please tune in to the HHH Racing Podcast for the entirety of your Pegasus World Cup coverage. For my co-hosts, Patrick Kunzel, Noah Maher, and Charlie Freeman, it's been your host, Kyle Roscoe, and a special Philly, uh, Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mayor Turf episode of Betting and Boozin. Until next time, cross those bets, win those photos, and stay safe, everyone. We'll see you in the next episode. Good night.